I'm joined now by Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha. Thank you for being with us. It's great to be with you. Now, I want to talk right into this about two NF, NSF certified filters in Newark that fail to remove lead from the corrosive tap water in the city. It's been leaching from old service lines that connect to the mains. The city's giving out bottled water while they do a larger test of filters, but you've said, and I quote, Newark is what keeps me up at night. Why is that? Well, Newark has had a lead and water crisis now for years, um, and I cannot believe it has not been front page news for a lot longer than this last week or so. The levels in Newark over the last several months have been quite high. Uh, they have been rising, uh, and they are threatening really the, the future of all of Newark's children. Now, you've said that Newark is not Flint, quote. And in fact, Newark's mayor bristles at the comparison. The state of Michigan criticized your research on Flint as splicing and dicing numbers and, and accused you of creating, quote, near hysteria. How is Newark not Flint? Well, you know, I think in the very beginning of Newark's water crisis, the city really wanted to distance itself from Flint. You know, when people think of Flint, they think of dirty brown water and they think of government failing and people being poisoned. So understandably, the city didn't want that same association. And I think for a while, um, the mayor was actually hashtagging Newark is not Flint. Um, and he's right. Newark is not Flint, because right now in Flint, we've almost replaced all of our lead pipes. And everybody in Flint knows that, that we had a problem. Everybody has lead clearing filters um, and knows how to protect themselves. And Newark is not there right now. People on the ground don't know fully how to protect themselves. There is has not been wide distribution of filters or bottled water. So I hope that Newark can catch up to Flint and fully protect, especially our most vulnerable populations, our children. There seems to be a crisis of confidence amongst the, the population here. Is that, do you see that as well? Um, yeah, I think the population in, in Newark, just like in the, the population in Flint, was lied to. Um, they were told for a long time that everything was okay, that there weren't any problems, that your water was safe. You know, in Flint, people were literally told to relax, that everything was okay. Um, very similar to what happened in, in Newark, um, where there was denial of this issue and until the NRDC came in and, and sued the city, and now everybody knows that it's a problem. So understandably, the people um, are, are not going to trust government. Uh, they, there's also been a lot of mixed messages in terms of filters work, filters don't work, um, and it's, it's hard for folks on the ground to know how to fully protect themselves. What is Flint doing that Newark should be doing? Well, the first thing that Flint did when we realized that we had this population-wide lead issue and we were able to kind of prove it very scientifically um, was that we declared a public health emergency. Um, and that allowed for the additional resources to communicate with very difficult to reach populations, um, also a very kind of high poverty community mm -hmm. that, that there, there was a problem with the water. And th this is what you need to do to fully protect yourselves. And the First step is Newark needs to do a better job to share with the public um, that this is a problem and that these are steps that can be taken. What, um, why are kids so much more susceptible to uh, issues with lead and particularly kids living below the poverty line? That's a great question and thank you for asking that. So lead is a well-known potent, irreversible neurotoxin. Um, it's a poison that we've known about really for centuries, like since the Roman times. But since then, we have learned a lot about lead. And now the scientific community widely recognizes that there is no safe level of lead. And it's most important for those developing children. Um, when you are an infant, a toddler, that is when your brain is developing the most. Um, and lead attacks that developing nervous system. And it leads to things like problems with development and cognition and behavior. Um, it has the potential to cause these life altering uh, changes. Um, so it's because of that incredible science of really what lead does to children's development and behavior that we now recognize that there is no safe level of lead. Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you.